Hello there. I hope that uh, you can all hear and see me okay and that my cat does not jump up or jump down in the middle of everything. But today I want to share with you <clears throat> something that has been growing on me and that is revelation knowledge about the spirit of death. There are so many, many things that we um, think is normal, which is not normal, which is actually a spirit of death. And once you get a hold of this um, revelation and God starts opening the door to you to understand this, your whole life will be changed. And it is amazing the difference. Uh, about the spirit of death man I have been be, because I'm writing a book on communion and the body and the blood of Jesus God is really opening the door to me in having an understanding about the spirit of death where it came from what it does and how we accept it as normal but let, let me start off in Genesis because this is where God always takes me to uh, when he uh, created everything in the he, when he created everything day by day, he said it was good. But when he said, um, and I should have gotten better prepared here, he talks about seed and everything has a seed in it and produces fruit. And then he talks about, um, okay, so he says in Genesis 129, he said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on all the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. So we know that seed time and harvest, we know that every seed produces after itself. In other words, a monkey will produce a monkey, a god will produce sons of God, a dog will produce a dog, okay? So fruit, tree, the trees produce seeds which produce fruit, okay? So if you go down further, he says this food shall, the seed shall be fruit for us. So if you go down to... Um, 2.16 it says he commanded man saying of every tree of the garden you may freely eat but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat for in the day you eat of it you shall die okay so what is the result of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil it, the result is death okay the word of God tells us that death is an enemy okay so we consider everything that has to do with death as part of life and I'm going to go back and kind of talk about that because it's going to really open up your eyes, really open up my eyes. First of all, I do not believe that God created the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay, I believe that Satan copied the tree of life by creating the tree of death. Okay, God creates life. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. So God did not create the death tree which was the tree of knowledge and good and evil, which when you ate its fruit produced death, okay? So that's where the spirit of death on the earth came from, is from the fruit from the tree. When you eat the fruit of the tree of death, it produces death in you. It creates a death cycle, okay? So <clears throat> he says you will die. And uh, every day he created things, he said that everything that he created, he said was good. But when he talked about the trees in the midst of the garden, he didn't say they were good. And he didn't say, uh, he didn't talk about creating them. He just said they were in the garden. Okay, so that's where death started. Now, what we do is we accept everyday events, conditions of our body, experiences and circumstances that are really in the cycle of death as part of life the spirit of death is already on the earth now if you looked at any of my videos and you saw my experiment that I did with rice it was an experiment from Dr. Moto uh, a Japanese doctor he took uh, water and froze it and he spoke hateful words over it and then he looked at the crystals it created. Then he took another bottle of water and he froze it. And he spoke loving words to it. And it created certain crystals. Excuse me. And then he took these um, snowflakes or these ice crystals. And he examined them. Sparky! 
quiet. See his name. Shh, shh, shh. Come here. Good boy. Go lay down. And he looked at him underneath the crystals. I mean, uh, the crystals underneath the microscope. And the crystals that were produced when he spoke good, loving, kind things were beautiful and symmetrical and and um, had order to them. And the the ice that he spoke negative to created irregular, jagged, broken, not complete patterns. And so then he took these same, uh, did the same thing, but he wrote words on pieces of paper and tape and put it on that, um, put it on like the frozen ice. He said negative words and he put that on the frozen ice and then he wrote down ne uh, positive words and put that on the other ice. And he noted the crystals and the crystals were totally different. They responded from the words. Now, I believe that there's frequencies in our words, in our sounds, but he did this on paper. So I don't really have an explanation for that except it's spiritual. Words are spiritual. The word of God is spiritual. So it, it's, this is the written word of God. Then you have the spoken word of God. And I believe written words and spoken words both have power to create or to destroy that they, uh, they're spiritual, they're supernatural. So anyway, so that takes you back to the tree of death. Now, some of the things that I have found that we believe and receive, which are a spirit of death, is, um, for example, aging. <clears throat> The process, as soon as you're born and you hit a certain age, you start dying. That is the spirit of death. God gave us a spirit of immortality and uh, everlasting life, life from heaven. I don't believe that we are normal when we become the sons of God. I believe that we are super normal. We are children of God, sons of God. We have authority and dominion to rule on this earth. And he told us to subdue and to take over things. And that means the last enemy to be put under our feet is death and we need to start now we're receiving death as though it's normal we're receiving aging as though aging is something to be experienced in life aging is not life aging is under the curse and the cycle and seasons of death when he created <clears throat> all the things that he created in Genesis 1 the stars he said the stars were for uh, signs and seasons days and years okay we live outside of time because those things were created for us and they create if you go outside of the stars the different planets have pulls on them which strengthen i mean which lengthens or shortens time and we go by a crystal or i think crystal clocks um have a, a pulse that creates that we use as time a rhythmic thing and now we have a satellite I believe it is that we um, all time comes from the satellite uh, so we are outside of the realm of time the spirit of death is inside the realm of time you have this pattern and this is time so as a child of God you're outside of here and you're living from heaven you're not living in the parameters of earth and earth's um death cycles you're you have authority and dominion when you grow and mature and understand that we are outside of time we're living from heaven because jesus died before the foundation of the earth but two thousand years ago in time he died but yet he died outside of time okay we get saved before we were even born we have the up uh, before we were even born jesus provided for what we needed to be saved and all we had to do was receive him well salvation isn't just salvation it's healing it's prosperity it's wealth it's wisdom it's knowledge it's discernment it's the spirit of god relationship with god relationship with being a new creation and supernatural so those things are who we are when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior and those are the things that um, we, our life and we are out outside of time because Jesus already did all that and all we have to do is receive it which takes it from the spirit realm into the physical realm okay so life our source of life should come from heaven not from earth's cycles because we are outside of the parameter perimeter whatever of 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 
signs and seasons because we are living as children of God from heaven. He said, seek those things where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, which has principalities, powers, mights, and dominions underneath him. So principalities, powers, mights, and dominions are good angels and bad angels, and they are under our authority and our dominion according to the word of God. And we tell them what to do by speaking the word or speaking the enemy's words. You know, our words, our attitudes, uh, create the atmosphere around us by what we do, life or death. And I'm going to go in all different directions here. But one of the things that I learned that was really, really valuable is, let me read this. <clears throat> I was studying the other day about hockey. <clears throat> I play ice hockey and I'm not the best on the team, okay? I'm one of two women, three women on the team, and I'm probably kind of lower middle, you know. Um, but I am trying to get better at playing hockey. And God is leading me in this. And I believe I have wisdom, knowledge, and discernment on how to play hockey, hockey skills, and so on. Well, I was just reading this about visualization. Athletes, worldly athletes, got this. And wrote this and I was looking at it and I go everything the world has is a copy of the original okay so your brain cannot tell the difference between something that is real and something you're imagining that's why it's a sin to uh, why you create um, fornication or um, um, having sex in your mind you know porn and just imagining sex with somebody is a sin you've already done it in your mind because your body can't tell the difference think of when you dream what happens when you dream no matter what you're dreaming about your body is reacting to it okay so if your brain can't tell the difference between something that's real and something that's imagined and imagination is our key is our bridge imagination is given to us to talk to heaven to be in the spirit realm our imagination is is for that purpose we're to uh, um cleanse our imagination with the blood of Jesus anyway so by imagining yourself going through different scenarios before they happen you're training your mind training your mind renew your mind to the Word of God you are renewing this is so awesome so exciting you are renewing your mind so like in hockey or in sports or in everyday life imagine yourself going through different scenarios before they happen you're training your mind to help you make the right play when the time becomes reality and what does the word say renew your mind to the Word of God so I'm using this as hockey so this can be implemented in any part of your life your mind now what does this have to do with life the cycles and seasons that you are in it's because you are feeding them by imagining the bad outcome for example this is gonna sound weird but I'm going to talk about hockey again because it's a passion that God gave me. Hockey. Okay, I had this hockey team. I'm my husband's captain. I'm assistant captain. We have. I recruit. I go on the ice. I skate almost every day because I love it. It's my stress release, my hockey, uh, my fun, and getting better and all that. And I recruit. So I recruited a bunch of people to be on our team. Well, they got really good and they ended up moving up. But in my mind, the way they did it kind of offended me because it seemed sort of sneaky. And it hurt my feelings, which was my choice, my decision. I was wrong. Okay. So right there, I had a strong emotion attack, uh, attached to an experience. My experience was these guys were really good. And because they were really good, why did they want to stay on our team? They wanted to move up. So they, they moved up. And I, that wasn't even in my mind at first. But it happened. Now we have this new team. Some of them are really good. Now, some of them are talking about being on two teams. Now, what do you think happened to my mind? Okay. The emotion was negative. These people got really good in my first team and moved up and I lost them. And I had this really great team of people and friends that I actually really like. And now they're talking about playing on two teams. Okay. First of all, my emotion in my mind goes back to the first team. Aha. Uh -huh. So it's attached to an emotion, cycles and season, life and death cycles. So what does my mind do, which was trained? Okay, these people are now playing on two teams. They're going to quit our team and move up. That is what my mind did because I did not renew it. And, and, and I'm, I'm going through the death cycle. Now, I know three people at least at every event in their life is trauma. When you have an emotion 
every negative thing has a strong emotion attached to it. And whenever you see something that's similar to that experience, that event, that strong emotion is going to come up and you're going to act out. You're going to imagine it. You're going to draw it to you and you're going to have continual cycle, death cycles of whatever it was. For example, I know three different people, real life friends, whatever. Every other week they're in the hospital room, emergency room, somebody in their family, something traumatic has died, drugs, alcohol, everything you can imagine. These people just continuously go through this cycle. Now, I know it also has to do, do with going to the courts of heaven and appealing your case and applying the blood of Jesus. But I believe that the way you get into these cycles is not to realize that they are death cycles. They're, you're going around and around and around in this death cycle, repeating itself, having emotions attached to it, not knowing what to do with it, just getting overwhelmed, which the whole goal is of death is to overwhelm you in small things and so that they can kill you the whole thing is to kill you okay that's the whole goal death kill you okay so oops <laughs> sorry that's my cat's butt <laughs> um so um this cycle continues now if you don't know about the courts of heaven, you want to get my book or uh, there's a bunch of great books out there, Robert Henderson books and courts of heaven. Learn about that because that is a matter too. But the death and life cycle thing is you're going to keep repeating this death and life cycle till you realize that you have authority and dominion over. But most people don't realize what the death cycle is. Okay. Anything that causes death is a death cycle. Okay. For example, my husband and me have been married 30 years. I'm 61 years old. I know I look 49. Pretty good looking for my age. No, I'm just, I'm just joking. Um, anyway, he got this rip-roaring cold, snot-blowing nose, and I was determined not to get it. Okay, it's been about two weeks now. And I was determined not to get it because that is the death cycle. Okay, at first I was not kissing him on the lips because I didn't want to get it. But then it was like... That's a death cycle. So what I did is I took communion. I took communion and I believed, um, <clears throat> where's my book? I have little booklets here that I, I do uh, confessions, which are life cycles, which I'll go over later if I remember, you remind me. Um, and I knew that, I would hear this growing up. I have been in all kinds of denominational churches and have been in trouble in them because I would teach and they would throw they want to throw me out or whatever because they were in the death cycle they were protecting the death cycle and receiving it as normal well we're not normal what's happening on the earth we do not we are not under the law of sin and death okay we are not under the death cycle but like my rice experiment I took what the dr. Moto did I'm sorry I didn't finish the story earlier. I took rice. I cooked it. I let it cool. I put it in three containers, three equal size containers, put three lids on it, labeled each one, um, love, hate, ignore. I put it in a dark place and left it there. Once a day, I would get out the love container and I'd say things like, you know what? God loves you. He died for you. He sent Jesus to be your son. You are some pretty white rice. You are awesome rice. I really love you. You are great rice. Okay. And then I totally ignored the ignore rice. I picked up the hate rice. I said, you know what? You're going to hell. You sinned last night. You deserve to go to hell. You are worthless. You are just worthless piece of rice. I'm never going to eat you. You're bad rice. Okay, and put that aside. For 28 days I did this. Guess what happened? The rice that I spoke loving to was pure white and fluffy. The rice that I spoke hate to had this big black fuzzy what I like to call tumor had this big black fuzzy growth in it yeah guess what you're doing to your kids your body and yourself or your neighbor when you do that talk like that okay and the not rice that I ignored turned black totally black I said what's up with this I sound like a what's up what's up with this anyway um, <laughs> sorry I got sidetracked me and my husband do that um, God said, everything that you don't talk to gravitates to the law of death, the cycle of death. 
and I ignored that rice and that rice turned black. And I thought that was even more exciting than the rice that had the growth on it that I talked hateful to. I ignored this rice and it turned black. So God told me that I need to speak to myself. Okay, I'm getting on so many rabbit trails here. And communion is how I do this because I am... I just wrote a book on the DNA, which has to do with communion. So get my other book on DNA. This is about communion, which is also about communion and DNA. And that other book's about communion and DNA. And this book here, he said, speak life. I had a vision once. <clears throat> I was sleeping and it was really cool. And I looked into a mirror, like my dirty mirror right here. Looked into my mirror. And instead of seeing my reflection, I saw Jesus' reflection. And I went, <gasps> And he started giggling and laughing. And that was the end of the vision. And he showed me later on, he said, my little confession booklet here, or one of the books I wrote, Kingdom Confessions, or my DNA book, or the book that's going to be out about communion, hopefully, probably not by Christmas. But anyway, he said, you need to speak these things over yourself, not necessarily to um, create... Uh, the angels and everybody to know it, but so that you are renewing your mind when you speak it out loud. Okay, before I get sidetracked, let me say this. Um, about this, also, when you say something to someone, your mind cannot differentiate between if you are saying it to someone else or yourself. So when you are saying something hateful to someone else, in your mind and in your body, you are saying it to yourself because your body can't tell the difference. So when you gossip or speak hateful about somebody, what you're doing is doing it to yourself. Remember it says that what you say about other people, uh, how you judge other people is how you will be judged. That's because your mind cannot tell the difference in reality between what is factual that you can touch and what is in your mind. That's why you can create cancer Six months after a traumatic event, people develop cancer, diabetes, and other uh, injuries and stuff to their body because their body is responding to that traumatic event. And the body is, uh, every sin, it has to be punished. And if your body has not understood that the blood of Jesus paid for your past, present, and future sins, then your body will punish yourself and it will use that traumatic experience as a door to unzip that sickness and that disease. And when you're gossiping, backbiting, putting people down, or you think that you are called of God to point out false prophets, you are just killing yourself. So keep your mouth shut. If you think somebody is a false prophet, it's not your job to point them out because you could be wrong. Point an example. Years and years and years ago, I've been a Christian about 38 years now, um, speaking in tongues that whole time. So, I mean, I wasn't like just a baby Christian. I was growing that whole time. But <clears throat> years and years ago, somebody introduced me to somebody and said, hey, he's seen Jesus. And I said to myself, oh, yeah, right. He's a crazy guy. Okay, now years later, I'm experiencing angels and Jesus and God and visions and <clears throat> all kinds of stuff, which I thought this guy was crazy for. Well, if I had been one of those um, people who are appointed to uh, tell this person, warn him about this prophet, I would have done that to that person back then. I would have been cursing myself, really, because my body can't tell the difference if I'm talking about them or I'm talking about me. Okay? So now that I'm matured and grown, I would, I, I, I'm experiencing the same thing he did. He was a mature Christian. I was an immature Christian. So when you point out false prophets, be careful. It comes back on you because what you are doing is you are saying something out of your mouth to someone else about someone and your body can't tell the difference if you're talking about yourself or if you're talking about someone else. So that is part of the life and death cycle. You've been redeemed of the death cycle. And you can create your world with your words. Now, other things that we accept as the death cycle. And I hope I am hitting on all these points I wanted to. I kind of had a broad vision of what I wanted to share. Um, <clears throat> some of the other things is 
okay, my husband having the cold. I never did get the cold. I, I, I would wake up and maybe have a little bit of a sore throat and say, right away, right away, I would recognize it. No, no, this is the death cycle. I've been redeemed of the death cycle. I take authority over it. And right away, I would say, symptoms of sore throat, cold, I don't receive you. I take authority over you. I have divin dominion over you. You are the death cycle. I am not allowing you. I am in the life, heavenly life. You go in Jesus' name. Gone, just like that. Uh, <clears throat> maybe later on in the day I would have a, <clears throat> a um, nose start running I say no so the secret is ask God to show you and open your eyes and ears to recognize things in life that are death cycles that everyone says is normal okay and then when they happen to you as soon as you get the very first symptom the very first symptom take dominion over it and let me give you another example I had some uh, like I said my husband retired and then he went back to work because we needed the money but the money is only like half as much as he used to get used to get and it's a bit of a challenge and we play hockey and hockey is really expensive and I'm not gonna quit hockey I would rather not eat than play hockey I mean hockey is my thing I love hockey and money has gotten really tight at different points <clears throat> and sometimes we end up paying for our team and they have no clue that that was my ten dollars that I had for this week for groceries you know that kind of situation well the other day something happened and it was like how am I gonna even get to my hockey game I don't even have gas or something like that and and right away the Holy Spirit said wait a minute that is under the death cycle as soon as you see a symptom of lack or a poverty mentality nip it in the bud right there he said that's it that's a, that's that's a death cycle nip it in the butt and I said in Jesus name I take authority over this death cycle of not having enough money not having finances to do this thing I want to do I I have abundant life I have the blessings of Abraham and I command you to go in Jesus name money come to me uh, bills get paid whatever and so the trick is recognizing the death cycle and the seasons and getting it as soon as the first sign goes. Now, God just reminded me, there are no seasons in heaven. There's, there's picturesque scenery of seasons, but there's no death in heaven. So when it has fall in heaven, it's not necessarily dead trees with no leaves. It's just the appearance, uh, you know, just pretty for our sake, okay? He said there are no seasons in heaven. So there are no seasons for you on the earth. It is always yes, it is always health, it is always wholeness, it is always prosperity, it is all, always healing, it is always now. Heavenly life now. No seasons. We say when you get to be a certain age, you start to deteriorate, your bones are supposed to do this, your vision is supposed to do this. I am believing for my vision to go backwards. Backwards. To have glasses that are less stronger less stronger less stronger less stronger or not at all we get lazy see we wear glasses okay so I wear these glasses and that means that my eyes have gotten lazy they've gotten dependent on these glasses which is the death cycle dependency okay so I my eyes have gotten to depend on these um, glasses so they've gotten lazy they don't have to work to get better okay they just have to relax and look through the glasses now the dentistry that's it's a death cycle you get teeth they get rotten that's not normal do you think people get rotten teeth in heaven no okay that's not normal menopause i have been fighting menopause for like 10 years i said god i know that menopause in fact i think that's what led me on this whole journey is menopause menopause is not happening in heaven okay I know I know of people who know of people who don't even carry a pregnancy nine months they have full term babies born at three months old they are full nine month old full term babies okay so we have to get our head off the earth and into heaven <clears throat> and into the life cycle instead of death. I mean, this is 
Amazing. And I'm going to get a little sidetrack here, but I want to blow your mind. No, I should, that's a bad thing to say. I want to get you excited. <clears throat> I love to hear stories of the supernatural that stretch my mind. Okay. One of the stories that I thought was really cool was, um, I don't know how long ago it happened or where it happened, but these Christians were coming back to life after they were killed, after they were martyred, they were coming back to life. So what they did is they cut off their head and they killed them by cutting off their head. Well, what happened is <laughs> somebody picked up the head and the body and it got back together again and the person rose from the dead. Stretch your faith. We're living from heaven. Remember, not earth. Stop thinking earth. Okay, so the next thing they did is they said, okay, we're going to kill these Christians. We're going to put the head on this side of the street and the body on this side of the street. Well, guess what happened? Boom. Raised from the dead. <laughs> they were raised from the dead. Okay. People are going to grow in the maturity of the sonship. And they are going to walk like Jesus walked because we are twins. We are born of the same seed. We have the mind of Christ. My mind and his mind. So I claim that I use 100% of my brain. Because I have the mind of Christ. Well, he uses 100% of his brain. My brain is not just restored back to what I had, but my mind is now connected with Jesus. Now, could Adam and Eve say that? They couldn't say they had the mind of Christ. They couldn't say that they were flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. I have my flesh and my bone is of Christ. I have flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. The word says that. I have the mind of Christ. It says we are one spirit heaven is inside of you not just up there it's inside of you because you are a spirit being okay adam and eve couldn't say that we have better than adam and eve we are one we are twins we we work together we co-labor together and it's so exciting okay now with the spirit of death okay think heaven think what heaven is like <clears throat> instead of earth okay cold it's normal to get the flu at this time of the year and these are the symptoms and this is the medication you're going to have to take to get rid of it. Uh-uh, uh-uh. No, no, no. They are brainwashing you. I haven't watched TV in about 14, 15 years now. Something like that. I hate TV with a passion. I won't listen to the radio either because what it is doing is planting seeds in my renewed mind to think normal i'm not normal i'm supernatural and so are you i will i do watch amazon videos that's all i do and i listen to youtube videos on the word of god and on hockey <clears throat> and other things i'm interested in like living off land and stuff but i hate the frequency of tv i i just hate it, I hate soap operas. Soap operas make you think that it's normal. Soap operas are so bad. And the news, the news is worse. Okay. What you need to know comes from the Holy Spirit. You do not need to listen to the news to live life. That is death. Everything the news says is to create an emotion in you so that you will feed off of what they're giving you and they will make more money and they want to feed off of that they want you to feed off of their bad information okay fast it get rid of it i fasted it and i never went back to it i hate the frequency i even hate the sound of the voice of of tv that there, there's there's a frequency a sound and it, it just is like a grinding i hate it i don't even like to go places where i have to listen to it i will put earplugs in or, or pray in the spirit or something i hate it so much and i hate the radio too because the frequency that i on the radio like the the songs they play i don't even like most christian music because it's woe is me god come visit me uh-uh it's not woe is you you ain't a sinner you are a Lord of the earth, you are a son of God. I'm going to tell you what you are in a few minutes. But those things are brainwashing you to believe what you hear on the news. Because the news never lies. They can't be wrong. Okay? It's all control. Control of your mind. The news, the soap operas, the things they show you on TV, the commercials in between the billboards and everything 
they are all fighting for your attention for your mind what you focus on you can have if you think that every season the flu comes then guess what subconsciously your mind is going to grab the flu from somebody because you need to get the flu because that's normal life no it's not that's under the death cycle and until you recognize what the death cycle is and you're not under it and you're to take authority over it you are going to receive it and until you realize that the fall of man was the death cycle so uh, the wages of sin is death okay this is really really important the wages of sin is death okay so your body whenever you sin consciously unconsciously on purpose intentionally or unintentionally your body punishes you okay excuse me your body punishes you that's why you get sickness disease uh, poverty all that stuff your body punishes you because it, it like you go through a traumatic experience you're gonna you're gonna come out because the the result of sin is death that's the death cycle okay so whenever you feel a symptom you got to take authority over it and recognize it as a death cycle whether it's a symptom of poverty or mentality or a victim mentality that's another thing victim mentality that's what I was doing with the hockey team I was having this victim mentality oh they're gonna leave me again they don't like me in fact yesterday I was at my hockey game and all of my team was in the other room and I was in the room with the guys I didn't know and I was feeling the heaviness of being awkward because they don't like to get changed in front of me you know because they go down to their underwear and some are naked and they go in the change or turn their back you know so they get awkward and um and most of my t team was in the other room and because of this playing on two teams spirit of grief came on me the spirit of sorrow and I was feeling heavy I didn't even want to go into their locker room because my mind was thinking oh they're just escaping they don't like me they don't want anything to do with me they're playing on another team they're gonna move to the other team they're gonna quit our team because they don't like me I'm 61 years old I'm no fun I'm the not one of the best players and that spirit came on me and when I recognized it I had to deal with it sorrow and grief is of the death cycle okay so I had to deal with that take authority over it, and it really helped because right away you start getting a victim mentality when you have a victim mentality you can't overcome and when you're in a constant cycle of sickness disease poverty lack fear death um, take this medicine do this do that oh this person hates me this person took drugs this my family member does this and this and this um, it's a victim mentality you can't be a vic a, a god Lord of Earth child of God when you have a victim mentality so watch out for the victim mentality now I was going somewhere I got sidetracked um, anyway when you look in the mirror <clears throat> some of the it says that uh, you know you were died with Christ it's no longer you who live but Christ who lives in you and, and you live by the faith of God think of that literally Christ lives in you He's redeemed you from the death cycle. You have so much power in you. We just have to grow up and we just have to mature and and use what he's given us. Like um, part of my confession here in my little booklet, and these will be in my new book. Um, and I think they're in my, some of them are in my DNA book, but I'm growing and this changes every, almost like weekly, this changes. And I, I'll put this in my new book on um, communion because this all relates to communion it all relates to communion in the body and the blood of Jesus uh, but <clears throat> some of the things I say is when I take communion I look in the mirror and I speak life okay I say like for example well um, I could say something like father I don't feel like I have very much I can't go do this I really need this I can't do this uh, financially I really need this but your word says I I'm I'm bringing my conscience to you I'm unconscious and consciously thinking these things father but your word says that you meet all my needs according to heavenly he heavenly places and you love me and I have the blessings of Abraham overtaking me so I choose to trust you in this circumstance and I'm choosing to trust you even though last time and right now it appears as though nothing's happening I choose to trust you I choose to trust you and I thank you father that I am out of the death cycle all things that become new in me I'm a new creation flesh of the flesh of Jesus bone of his bone 
I have a hundred percent of my mind being used because I have the mind of Christ. I am the bride of Christ. Men, you're gorgeous. You are the bride of Christ. Look at that. You are getting younger. Your wrinkles, and my wrinkles are going away. Your wrinkles are going away. You are looking younger. You are looking beautiful. You have healthy teeth and healthy eyes. Your youth is renewed. I have the, you are beautiful. You have the divine character, nature of God, the likeness of God, the image of God, the fullness of God, the body, the spirit, and my soul is holy, blameless, and above reproach in your sight. Thank you, God. I trust you, God. And I go through some of these things. Um, I have perfect love in me. And it ca love, perfect, your perfect love casts out all fear. And you have filled me with the fullness of Christ. I have perfect love in me. And perfect love casts out fear. Therefore, I have no torment. I have no fear. I have boldness and access and confidence. I have a sound mind. I can come to you anytime I want, Daddy. Angels hearken to the voice of my word. I speak your word, Father. I'm seated at the right hand of, of you, Father. Oh, I thank you, Father, that angels, angels and authorities and dominions and powers aren't subject to me because I'm in Christ and Christ is in me. Good angels and bad angels. I can tell them what to do. I'm taught all things by the Lord. I have no man that, ain't, that has to teach me because the Holy Spirit teaches me all things. Of course, I learn from other people too, but I'm expecting the Holy Spirit. He talks to me while I'm listening to somebody else usually. Um... I thank you that Holy Spirit brings all things to my memory, things I'm looking for when I go in another room, <clears throat> things I need to understand, uh, my hockey um, muscle memory from stuff I learned. He brings it to my memory. Um, I'm taught of all things. He reveals hidden things of darkness to me. I have partnership, fellowship, friendship with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus, with the Father, the cloud of witnesses, the ministering spirits, the host, and the body of Christ. I am a citizen of heaven. I have the fruit of the Spirit in me, all goodness, righteousness, and truth. I am joint heirs with Jesus, co-laborers with Christ spiritually and physically. I know how all things because Christ teaches me. I have the strength of God, the might of God through his Spirit. As he is, so am I in this world. I am alive, raised together, and seated together in Christ Jesus. I walk as he walked. I have the uncorruptible seed of Christ in me. To plant the heavens and God just said something right here we have the uncorruptible we just oh this is so good see if I can put it into words when we ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil which is the tree of death we had that seed in us and it produced the cycle and the seasons of death now when we take communion we are oh this is so good I was searching for this answer thank you Jesus uh, I should take notes <laughs> um, now when we take because I want you to know what's the difference between what do we receive when we take communion as compared when we get born again what's the difference like what's the difference between the Holy Spirit what he does and what the angels do well I got the answer to that but the answer to what do I get in communion that I didn't get in what's the difference between receiving communion what do I get as compared to being born again and he's just showing me when you take communion you are taking in the uncorruptible seed of the word of God that produces the life cycle from heaven as compared to the death cycle. So it's like taking medicine, like taking even better than medicine, vitamins, nutrients, and minerals for your physical body, renewed youth for your physical body, your mind of Christ, um, and your spirit born again and whole and perfect right now. When you're taking communion, you are becoming the tree of life the tree of life is in you and the fruit you produce oh that is so good the fruit you produce is from the tree of life so that is so exciting I should probably write that down wait a minute I gotta write that down okay I wrote that down okay so anyway <clears throat> so you are producing that in communion you're in other words if you're sick what I do is I take communion. As soon as the first symptom is sick, I take communion. And I go through who I am. And I look in the mirror. And when I look in the mirror, I see Jesus. And I go over what he did for me and who I am now in Christ. And then <clears throat> I take communion and I engage that. Because see, my communion here is pumpkin seeds. And the reason I have it in a medical bottle is to remind me that he is medicine and health for all my flesh. And then I have this little bottle here now which I put water in 
Um, because I don't, I, I don't like to mess with sugar, so I do a ketogenic diet, but I eat and drink the body and the blood of Jesus, and now I have a new understanding of what happens when you eat food. I would always say, God bless this food to my body, and I meant it, but I understand it differently now. When I take the body and the blood of Jesus, I am eating a new source that is outside of the realm of time that has more power, authority, and dominion than everything else on the earth. You see, everything else, everything on the earth is in its fallen nature. So even though I'm eating a ketogenic diet, when I eat my asparagus, my asparagus had to die in order to give me life so I could live. So there is the death cycle. And that asparagus, because it's under the fallen earth, it's not giving me everything it was created to give me. It's fallen. So no matter what I eat from this physical earth, I'm eating from its fallen nature. In other words, if I eat a chicken, the chicken died, gave its life so I could have nutrition. But the nutrition that it gave me will only last one or two days. And it's not perfect. But when I eat the body and the blood of Jesus, it's from heaven. When I, the symbol of the body and the blood of Jesus is the body and blood of Jesus restoring my body, healing me, health, and everything I need. It is a food source that is not from this earth, even though I'm eating a pumpkin seed and water. It's a representative of Jesus. So it's a food source that is not from this earth. Okay? So it's not in the fallen state. All vitamins, minerals, and everything on this earth the best vitamins in the world are still under the curse because they they only have earth as its source and earth is under the curse okay so when I take communion I say that everything else I eat after that till next communion when I say God bless this food to my body what I am saying is father wherever this food came from, whatever nutrition it does or doesn't have in it, I take it through and eat it and I ingest it through the body and the blood of Jesus. Okay, so as I take communion, I mean, as I eat, I say, bless this food to my body, make it healthy and nutritious, nutritional, and I eat it through the body and the blood of Jesus. A new... Uh, I take it as through the body and the blood of Jesus as if it is a fruit of the tree of life. Okay? Instead of fruit on this earth from the from the death cycle, from the tree of death. And it is really, really great to be able to do that. And, you know, gaining weight, eating the wrong, uh, gaining weight and eating food that you know isn't as healthy for your body. Those are all under the death cycle. All under the curse. All things that we do not have to have normal. You do not have to have a cold. You do not have to have sickness, disease of any kind. You do not have to have a garden that isn't good or, or um, bad relations or um, feel unwanted or ha not have food or abundance. Heaven is abundant. Okay? So, get a grip uh, and a picture of what is under the death cycle take a hold of it take authority and dominion over it. don't allow it and take communion and take and live and eat and breathe through the body and the blood of jesus now um <clears throat> everything else is the death, death cycle the only life cycle that we have available the only life seed the only life fruit that we actually have available to us on this earth is the body and the blood of jesus the tree of life which produces fruit and life in your life okay so take communion take it with that mindset take it with that understanding and um, I'm, I'm gonna post a, a little PDF file of some of these things here um, eh, I'm not done see I have a bunch of scriptures there <laughs> I think I'll wait and put it in my book when I'm completed with it because my little confession booklet when I take communion is um, going into my into the book I'm working on right now on uh, 
being transformed through the body and the blood of Jesus. So I think that I'm supposed to end there. So do me a favor. If this is a blessing to you, share it with your, with your groups, your so, social media sites and your friends. And here's my commercial. Okay. <laughs> I am a published author of about 50 books, 52 books, something like that. So get my book, share them with friends. Right now I marked about four of them down to 99 cents uh, for Christmas special for you guys. But especially the book on DNA, it was like $12 or something. I marked it down to 99 cents till Christmas as my gift to you. Seeds that I'm sowing, seeds of life that I'm sowing to you. But if you are a Christian author, I publish books for $399 I'll do all the work for you. I'm not a publisher. I am a publishing coach. But basically what I do is for $3.99, I take your manuscript. I format it into a Kindle book, into a print book. I open all accounts that you need, which is uh, right now they just switched over to Kindle and Creative Spaces 1. I open up your accounts. I upload all documentation, um, uh, put it in the right um, uh, categories and so on and do everything for you so that you have a published book I can do it within 30 days but I don't claim that if you want to pay extra hundred dollars rush order I can do that but because I have you know a bunch of different clients I say 90 days till you have your book in your hand so if you know right now I'm just kind of working with one or two people on a picture book they're kind of harder and more complicated but since Amazon create put creative space and Kindle together um, I'm open depending on how easy your book is to do and how complicated it is uh, I usually don't do picture books but call me or email me about it and let me see what we'll, we'll kind of go from there um, I offer promotion services I promote your book for one day Amazon free free days uh, several different programs I also um, if you have a book and you don't know what to do with it next I uh, created a for a thousand dollars I'll I'll do all what I just said Plus, I will create a book trailer for you. Plus, I will uh, do keyword researches, um, uh, what category you fit in researches, uh, amplify your description so it looks like Amazon is promoting you. And then I will also hire somebody to edit your book, and then I will promote it for 90 days. So that's the, the big package that I have that you might want to check into. Uh, I also have a what I call to get reviews. I have a list of reviewers that review Christian supernatural books and um, and then I have a template and I also I have that for sale for 20 25 names and I'm not guaranteeing that they will give you a review but they have given many people reviews um, <clears throat> if you need reviews on your book and it's a, a good to get about 25 reviews on your book um, I have 52 books so I'm not gonna get I'm gonna look, not looking for reviews except every time a new book comes out but anyway um, <clears throat> So I offer that service. I offer a, con a consultation for half an hour where I'll draw mind maps for you and get resources for you. You can ask me questions in any field that is related to um, your book, creating websites, um, how to promote your book, audible, audible books, print books uh, for half an hour. I think that's $25. I'm not sure. Uh, and then I also have another service um, where I enhance your, your book description on Kindle. Uh, where I make it look like they're promoting you with special codes and so on. So anyway, so I offer all those services. So if you know anybody that's writing a book or has written a book, has a testimony, a teaching, uh, something on how to walk in the supernatural, you know, pass this on to them. Let them know. My website is robinbremer.net, R-O-B-I-N-B-R-E-M-E-R.net. And um, you can find all the information on there. Uh, now, I'm in the process of changing phones. So I'll have this phone for at least one more week after that. I tried straight talk and it's not getting a connection up here. I'm not sure what I want to change to if I, if I want to try to keep this company or not. So if you can't reach me in a week, try email. Uh, you can always reach me on email, uh, robinbremer at sbcglobal.net. Um, you can reach me that way and talk to me that way. And if I give you permission and you've already emailed and talked to me, I can always talk to you through Facebook Messenger. And don't call me because I have over almost 5,000 friends and people call me in the middle of the night and in the middle of doing a live video. And I will not take calls, even if I know you, unless you pre-warn me 
what you're calling about and and I know you in some way so or you know said hey let's talk this way and I can always do that no matter which phone company I'm with because right now I'm kind of teetering and not sure so anyway <clears throat> robinbremer.net please share this with your social media sites share it with your groups especially your groups um, because I love this is like being on TV for me I love being on TV it's so much fun it's like coming into your living room and sitting down talking to you and getting excited about the things of God oh he's so much fun um, anyway so you all have a blessed day and I pray that God opens up your eyes to what you are allowing in your life that is from the cycle and the spirit of death in Jesus name and that you have understanding and how to take power authority and dominion over it and that you have a revelation about the spirit of life and taking communion and the power of communion so uh, I will talk to you later love y'all bye